Okay. <clears throat> Welcome back to Nick Lane's Comic Corner Classic Class Known Classics. This episode number 2241, double episode number 2135. Got two Marvel tra uh, one Marvel trade, one DC trade. Well, the first one is Fantastic Four by Mike uh, Mark Wade and Mike Warrigo. Um, this book collects issues 60 through, uh, let's see, I think it's like, um, it is 60 to 66 of Fantastic Four Flying 3, and it also collects Avengers 400. You're thinking, why the heck would it include Avengers 400? Well, the reason is actually pretty simple, really, because it was the first book they worked on together. Excuse me. Now, interesting fun fact about issues 6 and 66. Uh, these are the last issues published for... Well, actually, this is toward the end of like, like the, the third volume for the series. Most of the these issues in particular, like in the case of the first issue, it's they have no retelling of Fantastic Four's backstory. I've kind of discussed this already, but it's like one of the first stuff for Fantastic Four, but still. So, it's basically like, like a, a one of those day-in-the-life Fantastic Four stuff. Yeah, and that's just, it's just a standalone issue with the view of the new costumes they would sport uh, for the next few years. I think they stopped sporting this after Civil War One. Yes, it's basically the, the look that's, I think, going to be the look. I think they use this kind of this inspired look for the Fantastic Four 2005 movie. Yes, uh, this blue look with the with thing having pants. Yeah. So we have more practical jokes here. Lots of fun. You have Johnny and him having a fight in the park. Reed experimenting. It's like standard Fantastic Four stuff here. There's a little bit with uh, Reed basically seeing a vision of his son. Basically looks like he's affected by bugs. But this is still really interesting here. And then we have basically the first time we see this of, well, the Fantastic Four Incorporated. If you're curious though, when was the first time this show up in the comics you might be asking? Well, let me answer that for you. From what I can tell about Fantastic Four Incorporated is that it's basically here to manage the, the uh, inventions of Reed Richards. That's most of what exactly what it's here for. <clears throat> if you're curious, was this the first appearance of it? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. It didn't really appear very much at all. Yeah, it basically kind of, well, it kind of first showed up in issue of Fantastic Four 262. Yeah, that probably was the first mention of it. Yeah. The whole thing with Fantastic Four Incorporated, it just appeared in these issues for themselves. Uh, is it still around, per se? Uh, it's not really mentioned very much at all. But it's a very really interesting idea to have Fantastic Four Incorporated. Yeah, I personally think it's a great idea. And that's most of what they should do here. And then we have a three-parter for issues 62 to 64 called uh, Fentis... Uh, I can't really pronounce it. Um... Mostly probably just deal with more read and more stuff with Fantastic Four Incorporated. It's mostly what these issues are, just exploring stuff with Fantastic Four Incorporated. We also have debut of this green thing, which this is on the cover of the of the first issue of the storyline. Yep. Excuse me. Yeah, there's also pretty much these issues basically serve as a build up to uh, Fantastic Four 500. By the way, issue 6 is basically is a uh, character who only appears just in these issues in particular. Yeah, he may have, he may have brief return 527. Yeah, he appears for this one story here. And then he's done for quite a while. And he pops up in Fantastic Four 527. And then 65 and 66 is basically a quick little two-parter. Basically, the best way to describe these seven issues of Fantastic Four, it just seems as though these are very much just getting the feet off the ground, just not a soft reboot of Fantastic Four, just basically 
kind of leaning toward basically what they would you see the version of the version you see in Civil War One. Excuse me. <clears throat> Avengers four hundred just celebration of the series, which uh, that was also inclusion to a storyline going at that point in the time. Yes. Yeah, it was. I think it was inclusion. I think it was first sign. I think it was. No, it was just basically just celebrating the Fantastic Four issue. Uh, and then the issue had a cameo at the end of the issue by Nate Gray, which led to the Avengers involvement onslaught. Yep. Well, this was technically the first book they worked on. I Here's the thing, though. You would think a book called Fantastic Four by Mark Way and Mark, Mark Windigo. It is something, though, they included this particular issue in particular. Uh, nothing is ultimately an issue. Is it mentioned in the Fantastic Four, in the Fantastic Four issues? No, not really. Sadly, the artist working these issues, uh, Mike Warrigo, he is sadly no longer alive. He passed away about a little over a decade ago. But the guy was one really good artist. I'm trying to think. Is this really true? He's passed away. Um, oh, excuse me. Yeah, he passed away in 2007. He kind of worked with Mark Wade on mostly... You, basically, when you think of him at, at Marvel, he didn't. He did some stuff at Marvel. Um, he worked DDC with Mark Wade as well for Flash. I think he was also the one who introduced uh, Impulse. Yes, he created Impulse. Yep, he's the one who created Impulse. Uh, apparently, he brought more from from Marvel. But this technically now, here's a strange thing though about in the case of Mark Webergo, he didn't do a lot of comics at Marvel. Not really. Uh, when he originally was there, he did Avengers 400, and he worked on a series issue for Essential Spider-Man. And, of course, did also work on the first flying for Rogue. But that was it for him for about a decade until he, until he started doing well. He also did one issue of Fantastic Four, the last issue of the, of the volume before it got relaunched. Of course, Claremont. But he did come back to Marvel. He did books like Friend of Spider-Man, of course, Fantastic Four, obviously, which he had a pretty lengthy run of the book. He was on the book, surprisingly, for three years. He left once Mark Wade wrapped up his run for the book. Yep, he did. Apparently, he passed away. Uh, it was something due to cardiac dissection. Something with, uh... Looked like something with, with a heart valve. But yeah, um, the guy was one really good artist. I love the guy's work. I've read, now in case you're curious, I've read all of his work. Uh, I've read most of his work. I think in the case of Marvel, I've read pretty much all of it. Uh, for DC, I'd say I read everything he did for DC. Image, I think I read one of these books. Malibu, I don't think I have read anything from them. And well, I think I have read the, 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 the Malibu book stuff for Marvel and DC. Spider-Up Boy, I've read, I've read that. But everything else, I'm pretty much mostly read. Uh, Marvel, all about like one book. Uh, DC, all about one book, and that was DC with Million Giant. For Marvel, was uh, Stanley meets with Civil Surfer. The image stuff and Melo. Basically, the guy didn't do a lot, but the guy was just just really good at his work at what he did. Um, I give this trade in particular a nine point five out of ten. Just really good. Next up, we have is. Oh. Excuse me. Convergence. Flashpoint. Book 2. My friend Timmy would love the fact that I'm reviewing this book. Because basically one of the stories is called Speed Force. Where it features Wally West, Team of Wiz Kids, Jay, and Iris. Yes. So this book contains uh, Convergence, The Atom, Speed Force, Titans, and Batman and Robin. The first one is basically Atom. Which is a which is a book done by Tom Payer. Art by Stephen Yabo. It mostly focuses on Ray Palmer. And him fighting, of course, pre-Flashpoint Deathstroke. The biggest thing with these two issues is that we see the return of Ray Palmer. Thanks to basically using... Uh, he reformed thanks to... Ray Palmer on top of his hand giving it to Ray Palmer. Right, revive him. Yeah, that was the whole point of this two-part. was to revive 
uh, Roy Cheeto. Also, for some reason, Slade has shaved his head. Yes, for some reason, in this two-parter, he pretty much shaved his head. But this is an excellent storyline here. It definitely felt like, basically, an Adam story. A little, little bit of, like, classic Adam and all new Adam, which I thought was really awesome. And by the way, this is the whole thing of, like, oh, the wall is falling, this Adam in here. Not really. Next, we have Speed Force, which is done by the awesome Tony Bedard and Tom Grimmett. I've met Tony Bedard, a real nice uh, main person. I'm sure my friend Tim, this is probably one of his favorite books under Flash, because it's Wally West. Now, I wasn't reading comics when he, when he was a Flash. Uh, I didn't start reading DC regular basis until 2010, which he was already de- retired at that point, when his uncle came back. And this is basically a two-parter. W- and here's the thing. They're in... And this is quite standard. This is just me, or it's like... This is something that is a mild complaint about the tie-in books. Why the heck is it like every single superhero of the Convergence tie-ins trapped in Gotham City of all places? Yeah, apparently, Wally was in Gotham City with kids... And they get trapped there for a while. Then he starts fighting Flashpoint Wonder Woman. And the Bizarre World. Yeah, seriously, he goes to various worlds, like World War II. But he ends up fighting, basically, because, well, the whole point of this book is basically, uh, the whole point of Virgin is have various different timelines fight each other. Here you have Flash versus, you have Wally versus Flashpoint Wonder Woman for, for this two-parter. Oh, by the way, the covers are done by Brett Booth. He does not do the interior. Nope, he does not do the interior. I gotta admit, this is actually pretty fun. I love this book. Yep. And then right after this two-parter, then we have the Titans tie-in. Oh, boy. I know Lynn Carr, he loved this book because this is the book where they revived Leanne Harper. Yes, basically this book, which is written by Fabian the Caesar, which, yes, I met this guy, too. It's mostly put the story of how she got revived. And by the way, the story is called Try for Justice. Yes, Try for Justice. Now, Ron Wagner, he does the artwork. Yes, this two-parter, it mostly is continuing from where the original Titan series left off. And it's basically, you have, you have Roy here. He's also here with Starfire and Donna Troy. And he's basically kind of like, now, where are they? Are they in Gotham City? Well, they've been trapped there for a whole year? Why, yes, it's Gotham City. Why the heck has everyone been trapped in Gotham City for? Like, can they take it from a different place? Like, oh, how about Metropolis or Century? Nope, it has to be Gotham. Gotham, 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 Gotham. Always freaking Gotham. And, of course, he fights the extremists. Now, these are not from a different uh, universe, per se, these are people who actually are fighting post Flashpoint timeline DC Universe. Uh, the Extremists. They're a group of 90s villains who uh, the season brought back for this two parter, which, well, also involves Leanne coming back for this two parter. Yeah, and also we have guest appearance here by Cyborg and Beast Boy. Uh, no Robin. Yeah, no Nightwing, no Batman. It's, it's strange, though, but it's a really good two parter. And then we have the Batman and Robin miniseries. Now you're probably thinking, okay, was this written by, at the time, was it Tomasi? Nope. Was it Grant Morrison? Nope. Uh, who wrote this, you might ask? Ron Martz. Yes, Ron Martz wrote this. Because it's most of have Ivy just... Be angry at these following characters. Manbat, a version of Black Mask, who looks really weird. Uh, the Penguin... And Killer Croc. And by the way, the art is by De- uh, Dennis Cohen, who is an artist who worked with Danny O'Neill in the Questions book. Yeah. And mostly we have here, we have Batman, who is basically, I think it's, uh, based on its build, it's, um, you would assume, because this is pre-Flashpoint stuff, that this is probably Dick Grayson of the suit. Now, the Robin is obviously Damien, but... And here working with Red Hood of all people. Yes, freaking Red Hood. And I think the Poison Ivy, I think she's supposed to be Earth 1 Poison Ivy. I believe so. Let me take a look, because I think it's supposed to be, based on her parents, she looks like Earth 1. Uh... Okay. 
Because I think this is supposed to be... Based on the build, it looks like this is Bruce Wayne. Yep, it's Bruce Wayne. Oh. Uh. Excuse me. So apparently everyone in this book is just from pre-Flashpoint, which is strange. Like, if this is supposed to be pre-Flashpoint Batman and Robin, shouldn't the Batman in this suit in this book be Dick Grayson, not Bruce Wayne? Yeah, I think this is a bit weird. I think he's acting big out of character, especially as the last book just featured in for pre-Crisis, pre-Flashpoint was uh, Gotham City of Sirens. It's a really interesting two-part. I do appreciate it. Convergence will be a small role. And here's another book where they find the extremists. I'm like, why the heck are we fighting these guys in our book for? I don't know why they fight them. And then, of course, they kind of work together. And then he meets up with Superman. Yes, pre-Flashpoint Superman. Yes, which, which makes us like the other comic is PJ side his own miniseries. No, seriously, it's pre-Flashpoint Superman. I'm like, seriously? What the heck is this? Yeah. Oh, by the way, in case you're curious who created The Extremist, it was Keith Gippen, Jane Demetrius, and Brett uh, Bart Sears. Yeah. So for Convergence, they appeared in this two-issue two, two, two miniseries. They appeared in the Titans miniseries. Catwoman, Supergirl Matrix, Superman Man of Steel, and World's Finest. Yeah. What are you thinking? Really? Superman is here? Yeah, free flash point Superman is here in this book. Which seems strange that he would do this because he also appeared in the main book a little bit. Like, there must be a reason why that they had to have Superman pop up here, but he did. I don't really know the reason why he's here. But he just happily appearing here. Just cause. So yeah, he appears in his own miniseries. This book, he also appeared in Convergence, Green Lantern Corps, and, and Green Lantern's last Parallax. Yeah. So he gets around. So it was nice way to wrap up this miniseries. And then we have... The Harley Quinn miniseries. Now this one I don't have a problem with this because it's Harley Quinn. Now any Harley Quinn. This is pretty flash by Harley Quinn. Yep. Now, was this written by Amanda Connor? Nope. It's written by Steve Poog. I work by Phil Walding. Yeah, and this one does do a little bit of convergence. It's so we have flash with Harley Quinn there. Stuff she was doing before. It's basically the whole point of this miniseries, it's more like a teen she got the city sirens. And it's her basically Get this. We and who is she fighting? What are the universe she fighting in this miniseries? She's fighting Captain Carrot and the Zoo Crew. And you're thinking, who the heck are these guys? Uh they were a group of characters who appeared back in the eighties. They were basically the easiest time to do a supervised version of the Looney Tunes. Do they appear in the current continuity? Yes, but for some reason keep getting reimagined Captain Carrot as a version of Rock a Raccoon. But it's a funny miniseries. I did really enjoy it. And that's pretty much the whole thing in a nutshell. Yeah. Really good book here. I would probably say... Um, like if you ask me personally, what, what was probably the best books in this whole entire uh, trade here? I would say they're all really good. I would... Yeah, I would definitely say so. If I would say one of our weaker books per se, it's probably Batman and Robin. Yes. I would say the best books are Speed Force, The Atom, Titans, and Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn, I think, is more of a fun book, per se. I would say the best ones overall are Atom, Speed Force, and Titans, with Harley Quinn just below there, and below that one is Batman and Robin. Nothing against the writer, per se. It's just that, okay, it's just that it feels a bit lower than their books. Well, yeah, that's particularly a particular view. 
Next up is going to be Marshall, and I'll talk about that one. It's a very interesting thing to talk about that one, okay? See you. Bye.